this might be quite a long or short home brew Wednesday, depending on how quick I get through it. Um, haven't done one for a while, got a few bits, a few upgrades I want to talk about. Um, firstly is the keg system. Um, it's been working really well. Um, I did a bitter in it uh, a good four weeks ago. Uh, naturally carbonated, I just added uh, priming sugar like you would any bottle. Um, some people say you're meant to reduce the amount of priming sugar that you would in a bottle because of the head space in the keg and that, but I didn't and it seemed to work fine. Um, I tried various taps. I had, um, I think it's called uh, Alumask Tap. It's the company that makes them. There's that and Daleks Taps, I think they're called. There's there's two different types kind of thing. And they're the ones you see that, like, sort of like behind me where they're on like a little metal thing with a little drip tray in there. I've got a, a bowl in mine at the moment because I, I got given this set and it doesn't actually have a drip tray, so I'm just rocking with a bowl at the moment, but I might change that. So a bitter worked really well for it. It was a um, Young's Harvest Bitter. And um, I don't rate them kits, they're, they're quite rubbish, to be honest. Um, I got the kit for like three quid. I tweaked it a little bit, added some extra crystal maul, added a load of hops. Um, I dry hopped it again in the keg. And um, through, well, sorry, in a container, and then I put it in the keg. And it was great. Um, you kind of got like almost like cast conditioned beer through the keg when you had like naturally carbonated it. And I've got like a little mini CO2 charge. I think it's the Genuine Innovations is the company that make that one. Um, you can buy their CO2 bulbs, and they're mega expensive. Or the Young's, I think it's 16 gram bulbs, which you can get from most sort of homebrew shops. About I think there's about five bulbs for about five quid, and they do fit that one. Genuine Innovations come and make that so that you'll avoid your warranty if you use any other bulb in it, but. Like, I don't know, it's, you're not going to ever return it anyway, and if it breaks, I would just get a different one. And since then I have found an even better version of the um, of that kind of CO2 charger that's even simpler and cheaper that you can get on eBay. I'll put a link to that in my uh, my video. So, um, this week was the first time I've using the Young's uh, CO2 bowl. And the only thing I did notice was you've got to make sure that you really do get it sort of squared onto the, the charger, because... If you don't, you get like all the CO2 escaping and it goes cold. What's good about this one and some of the other ones I've seen, you get a little jacket to hold it. Because if you don't, once that starts discharging, the, the uh, cartridge gets cold and it freezes. And if you have that in your hand, it probably freezes your hand and give you like frostbite and like rip all your skin off in your hand. So it's good that you get that. Um, the line that's coming out of this is, what is it now? I can't even remember, 3 sixteenths. I did try normal 3 eighths beer line, just the short length of it with a tap, and it just got like a load of foam out. I got this out from uh, Norm from eBay, everyone knows Norman. And um, if you don't, you'll, you'll surely find a way of contacting him on eBay. And he provided me that with the connector to go on it, and then you can obviously go, you get like the John Guest fittings and you can narrow down to whatever size. Um, tonight I tried using it with the um, Alumas tap again, but I think the Alumas tap's got like a problem where it's leaking through the top. Uh, this I picked up off a chap on one of the forums the other day. He was selling a load of his equipment. He was selling up quite a sad thing, but I've put his tap to use. Um, it's a really weighty tap. I'm not sure I'll, I'll kind of roll with this setup because this needs to be clamped to um, a countertop, and having it set up in the flat like this is not really kind of going to work on a, on a long-term basis, but. I've, I've got a few ideas of how to kind of conceal this keg and make it sort of part of the flat without the, the wife, you know, getting too upset about it. Um, but that will follow in a later video. I've got a few plans of how to, to conceal it and that. But the tap is, is really quite good. The only thing that is a bit of a problem is I do seem to get still quite a lot of foaming. And with the 3 16th line, it, it does cut it down. And there is a, I can't remember the equation of how many extra foot per line decreases the PSI. But at current, with just carbonating with the sugar, I don't know the exact quantity of PSI that I've got in the keg. But there is a solution. You can get on certain um, websites, like a little CO2 gauge that connects onto your gas side. You put that on and it will read what PSI is in the keg. Uh, most people probably wouldn't use them because they've got a, like a corny keg setup where they've got the CO2 
regulator and the actual CO2 gas cylinder, but in the flat I just want to kind of naturally carbonate and use the little CO2 bowl and it'd be good to know how much pressure's in there before I dispense and I could sort of release a little bit through the valve. Um, I can understand most people probably wouldn't use this setup. I've seen in America they use, and in Australia, they use a lot of these setups when they go kind of like camping for the weekend. And I've seen some really cool kind of like mobile keg writers where they put like coils in um, cooler boxes, put ice around them and they get cold beer. In this one, tonight, between the neoprene jacket and the keg, I've put some ice packs. So it's actually chilled the beer down a little bit. Uh, not significantly, but enough. Um, but this time of year where the weather's a little bit cooler, although it's quite warm at the moment, the beer coming out when I had the bitter a few weeks back was just right. It was kind of like bordering kind of like cellar temperature where I'd kept the keg in a cupboard. So it was it was adequate. And the CO2 bulb, the whole keg last time for the nine litre, I didn't have to use it until the very end. It felt like it was it was struggling to get a bit out. And I just kind of squirted a little bit into the keg um, just to get rid of it. And bearing in mind that that same CO2 bulb was the bulb that I used initially just to seal the lid of the keg when I did it. Because even though I used priming sugar to carbonate the keg, I um, used like a little blast of CO2 just to seal it. I purged it and then put another little blast in just to make sure there's a blanket CO2 on there. So it's not being carbonated by the CO2, but it's just to seal the lid and you know keep it airtight kind of thing. So I'm just going to pour a beer quickly. I'll show you that it can be quite quite foamy, but it does settle out. It takes a little while to pour. I don't know if that's because of the length of the, the 3 16th line. I think there's about five foot on there, but I'm not too fussed about that. I've got I've got enough time to uh, to wait. And with this, you pull it one way to uh, get the beer out, and then you can put it back on itself to put a bit of head on it. But I think with this setup, the head that it's it's providing, I don't think I'll ever need really need to use that. Just stop it there. So you can see it's got quite a bit of a of a beastie head on it, but the carbonation is excellent considering that. That's not been gassed with the CO2, it's just purely like the sugar you would have in your bottle. And it tastes fantastic. And that's another thing. Beers from a, a keg like this taste so much better. I know from a fact from going around Hamlet Phone Brew's house and seeing he, when he had his like his keg set up in his living room, well, sort of just near it kind of thing. And then trying a beer off that. There's something about it. I think the the conditioning of the beer on the on the CO2 and through a keg gives it something else. But when I first thought about doing this um, priming with sugar, the bloke that I found out, there's not a lot of people on YouTube that seem to have do it or talk about it. But there's a lot of people on the internet that have done it. You can do it in a nine uh, nineteen liter keg, but I'm guessing that the amount of sugar to the the, the uh, space of the keg, you'd probably need a lot more CO2 earlier on in to dispense the rest of the keg than you would a 9 litre. I'm, I'm just guessing, I, I very much doubt you could get a whole 19 litre out just from the uh, natural carbonation alone. And the chap that I saw the first do this video that said that he sealed the lid with it and that, he claimed, well he thought, that uh, naturally carbonated beer tasted a lot better than beer carbonated with CO2. He felt that it, it sort of lost some of its flavour from it. And another thing as well is a lot of people that haven't done it have said they wouldn't do it because of all the um, like the, the the fallout you get from it, like the the yeast layer you get like at the bottom of a bottle, but from when I've done this, the first, a lot of people said the first pint would be really murky and that it is quite a little bit murky. I mean this beer is going to be quite murky because it's got so much hops in it and it's so much dry hopping that if this beer was ever to be clear, then I don't know how you would do it, but. Um, so yeah, he claimed that having it naturally carbonated was kind of a a better way of doing it. Um, and it added to the flavour. And I guess what, what he's getting at is a bit like a, a cast conditioned beer is where it's, it's still live, where it's in the barrel and it's you know and it's it's changing while it's in there kind of thing, rather than it's being false carbonated with CO two and then dispensed. But regardless of that, kegged beer tastes better than a beer from like 
I don't know, even a beer from a pressure barrel can taste better, I think, than from a bottle sometimes. It's just, it's just something about it that it adds to it than what you get from just a bottle sometimes. I'm very aware that this video is turning into be quite a long video, possibly too long for me. I might cut it, I might have this as a keg setup video, and then I'm going to talk about my next bit for another video, I think, because I don't want to bore you too much. Uh, the beer is the Malt Miller Punky IPA kit. I'm going to do a separate video on that because it deserves it. It's just exceptional. I'm not going to say any more than that, but when I do my video, I've got I'm going to do a side by side. Though I have got another home brew as well from Ant Rogerson, which I'll talk about as well soon. Um, I might side it by that as well, but an exceptional beer. And on a keg, wow, I don't, I don't know if that's going to last the night, but anyway, I will cut back, I think. For another video because i think i've spoke so much about my keg system because i'm so happy with it that i will uh, 